Hello and welcome to another episode of Low End Box TV. This is part four of our series on how to build a highly available WordPress site from scratch. Our goal here is to have a WordPress site up and running. Uh, we're going to be using two different nodes and if one node uh, fails, the data center goes up in smoke or what have you, the end user sitting, you know, some, some random stranger on the internet with uh, his or her web browser will still be going to our site. We'll have no idea there was a problem uh, because we've got a high availability solution in place. If you're curious exactly what our overall configuration or our goals are, go watch the first video in this series where we talk about uh, what high availability means in this context and we're really going for the gold standard here we want these two nodes to be in sync both um, uh, bi-directionally so that uh, if um, we you know someone commits some information or new comments or a new post on node one let's say it's automatically synchronized to node two and uh, vice versa now there are different ways of doing that synchronization, uh, we're going to be doing um, uh well, there's two levels here that we have to concern ourselves with. The first is the database level. That's pretty straightforward because we're using MariaDB, which is the uh, kind of FOSS fork of MySQL. And uh, MariaDB it supports a bi-directional multi-master replication. So we've already set that up. We did that in the last video. Uh, so you can go on to node one and, and create uh, tables or, or add information into the um, the da WordPress database there, and it's automatically replicated to node two and vice versa. But we also have to replicate files because if you think about the WordPress architecture, most of the text lives in um, in the database. In fact, all of the text I think lives in the database. But you may have stuff outside the database, such as images and other uh, art assets. You might have themes or uploads. Kind of depends on what you're doing on your site. Um, and if you don't synchronize that, what could happen is that when, when the user goes to node one, because we're using round robin DNS, so it'll kind of um, rotate between the two nodes. When they go to node one, um, they would see the site you know, as designed, but maybe when they go to node two, if you haven't replicated that information over, they would uh, those images would be broken, right? The broken links and such. So uh, we need to keep those two in sync. Um, and we have a couple different options for doing that. Now we're going here for the gold standard, uh, which uh, is that all of that will be handled automatically, right? It's in other words, we're gonna have it, if I'm working, I don't even know what node I'm on, I don't care, because no matter what update I put on a node, it's gonna be replicated to the other one. Um, there are some other ways of doing this that are a bit uh, more manual. They might be a little bit easier to configure, and if you're, um, you know, you've got like a low volume site or there's only one author, perhaps, um, these are very viable. You know, you can use rsync would be a great example of this. You know, rsync is not bi-directional and it's not real time. But, um, you know, you could say, all right, I'm going to make all my updates on node one. And then if I upload a new image or a new theme or what have you, I just I have an rsync command I type and, and node two is updated. And that may be perfectly fine for for what you're doing. Remember, the comments and that kind of stuff will still be synced because that's all in the database. But the art images, uh, the uploads, the themes, whatever, are something that you would manually do yourself. Um, it's not a bad option, but it is a manual option. There is uh, a couple other things you could look at would be one would be LSYNC D. That is a real time replication, but it's not bi directional. It's only a one way sync. So that really won't work in our case. Um, another option would be Unison, which is bi directional, but not real time, right? You could run Unison in the crop job you know, every few minutes or however you want to keep your nodes in sync, but you would have a substantial lag there. There's also uh, Gluster FS. That is multi-directional or bi-directional, however you want to put it. It's real time, but there you need a minimum of three nodes for a quorum. And that product does work pretty well, but um, I wanted to keep things a little bit simpler, so we're using a two node setup. Uh, and there are certainly other synchronization tools and technologies out there, but I think in our environment, uh, the, the choice that we made with DRBD for this series is gonna work pretty well. And DRBD is both bi-directional and 
real time. It works at the partition level, or the block level, I should say. So we've got a partition on each side of our nodes, and that partition is where we're going to be storing information, and those two partitions will be bit for bit in sync. Okay, uh, And on top of that, of course, we'll create a file system. We can't just use normal ext4, we'll have to use a cluster file system that supports shared disk operations. That'll be our next video. In this video, we're just going to get DRBD uh, set up. Now I'm using Linode. Uh, Linode is the provider here. And for um, each of these nodes, I've added a 10 gig block storage disk to each node. Now there's nothing magic about Linode in this configuration. You can do the same thing with Vulture or uh, you know, by VM slabs. You can do the same thing certainly in the big public clouds like Amazon or, or Azure, Google um, uh, public cloud. But um, if you were doing this on just kind of traditional KVM type disk, what you'd want to do is when you're installing the KVM, don't go through the template, go through the ISO and set up a special partition where your information will live and use that on each node to keep those two partitions in sync. Um, the advantage of doing it with a provider that offers block storage is that I can resize those volumes if I want. I can easily say, ah, I've, I've outgrown however much I've got. I'm going to move all that data to a new bigger volume or maybe in some cases you can even grow the volume. So uh, it's a little bit more flexible. In this case, uh, because this is just a tutorial, I've just added a 10 gigabyte uh, block storage disk to each node. All right, so to uh, get started here, I'm on node one. We've got to install some packages. We're going to install, I have to get, yes, install DRBD utils, and I'm going to install OCFS2 as well. OCFS2 stands for Oracle Cluster File System Version 2. Now, don't let that proprietary name <laughs> freak you out. Uh, the OCFS is actually under the GPL. It's a fairly mainstream uh, product at this point. It's a pretty good cluster file system. So we're going to install that on node one. Uh oh, let's go. Uh, better do an app get update. And well, perhaps I have typed it wrong. App cache search drbd. Of course, that's what I did. I, I typoed it. All right. Phew, thought my uh, whole tutorial here was going to come crashing to a halt. DRBD, there we go. All right, and then we can go do that while we're waiting over here on node two as well. Here we go. Node two, apt get in, uh, yes, install DRBD utils. Oh, uh, boy, I just cannot type tonight, can I? Utils, OCFS2 tools. Boom, there it goes. Okay. So we've installed that, and um, on node one, let's discover where that disk is that we added. Remember I said we added a 10 gigabyte block storage disk, so there's a couple ways I can do it. I can go into DMSG, and I'll see here this, uh, these messages here towards the end, they say, you know, uh, uh, you know, new volume, uh, here it is, you can see it's 10 gigabytes, um, it's attached under... SDC. Probably the easier way though is to do an LSBLK or list blocks. And there I can see, okay, SDC is my uh, my volume. Now, um, let's see if it's partitioned. This is a relatively small one, so I'll just use FDISC instead of SDC. Print the partition table. Oh, there's not a partition table on it. So what I'm going to do is um, create a uh, partition. Let's go new partition, primary, partition one, first sector, last sector. I'm just hitting enter there to accept the defaults. And I can print again if I want and then write. Good. So that is partitioned. And then um, let's see, that should be good enough for the moment on that. Now let's go over to the other node. And I'm going to guess LSBLK. Yeah, it's on dev SDC. All right, so FDisk dev SDC over here. Uh, no partition table yet. So new partition one, first sector, last sector, print it, write it, and we're done. All right, so that is, I've got my two disks partitioned on each side. Now, we need to set up uh, DRBD. So let's go to Etsy, drbd.d. And you'll see, oops, there's some files in here. It's globalcommon.conf. And what I'm going to do 
if you if you look at that file, globalcommon.com, it's got all kinds of information, most of which, as you can tell, is um, commented out. So I'm just going to copy that. Uh, let's see here. Actually, let's just move it. Let's move it global to, we'll call it dot .dist, just so I'll keep it around for reference. But then I want to make a new one, just called globalcommon.com. And the only thing I really need in here, let's see, global usage count, yes. And then common net protocol C. If I'm using tabs here, I could certainly, um, I forget what the ta what the command is in Vim at the moment, but I, it's one tab I'm just having over. You can make those tabs a little bit uh, smaller. Sorry, I've been going back and forth between Emacs and VI of late. I don't remember what that uh, command is to reformat those. But um, that's essentially all you need to do. Um, the protocol C, there are a number of different protocols. You can go read up on DRBD if you want, but um, that is a synchronous replication protocol. Now, let's just talk real quick about that. If I had... Um, I probably would not run DRBD if I had my primary in, let's say, Los Angeles, and my or we have my had Node One. There really isn't a primary in this scenario. If I had Node One in Los Angeles and Node Two in like Amsterdam, that's an awful long way for those packets to go back and forth, waiting for um, commit, and just the odds that something's going to get out of sync, a packet's going to be dropped, etc., just is a bit too too high. In this case, they're in the same data center. Um, I, I wouldn't have a problem if they were in relatively close close data centers, but if I was going further, I might think about some other replication technologies or use a different protocol here. But for, for our purposes, uh, I think we're in, in great shape here. So um, I'm going to leave that as is. And now we need to go to Etsy DR BDD, and we'll create this r0.res file. And Let's see here. I am going to say resource R0 on node1.lowend.party address and here, I need to learn how to spell, address, let's um, get our current address. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so address this and 7788, whoops, 7788 is the port we want to use. Device, dev, drbd0, meta disk internal, disk dev sdc1. And if you think I'm just typing that all from some notes, you are absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> Note to low end dot party. Uh, Let's say rows two through seven, copy and paste. Yeah, sorry, two, seven, yank, paste. All right, so let's go here to node two, low end party. And let's do an MS lookup on node two dot low end dot party. And there it is. So we can replace this address with that address and everything else is the same so some things that I've done here this device let's just walk through this briefly here's the address obviously both nodes and, and DRBD is a two node system um, the both nodes need to know in the configuration where the other node is the device is dev DRBD 0 now you could have more than one DRBD device MetaDisk internal, I don't remember offhand what that is, but I believe that's where it's storing its metadata, it's keeping that in, uh, well, I better not say because I'm not 100% certain. And then disk dev SDC1 is the disk that would be used. Um, let's see here. We're going to put in something and we're going to um, comment it out because we'll uncomment this later. Startup <coughs> become primary on both. And then um, for net, we've got a couple things here. Cram HMAC alg is SHA-1. That's the um, algorithm it's using for um, 
basically for a detach algorithm. Shared secret, we could put a long complex password here. I'm just going to use the word secret. Um, I'm going to leave this commented out for the moment. Allow two primaries, yes. And then after SB, zero pry, discard. Zero changes. After SB, one pry, discard. Secondary. And after SB, two pry, disconnect. All right, that's the end of our net clause and we're good to go. Now, be completely upfront with you. Some of this language, the after after SB zero pry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can go look that up in the DRBD manual. I read about it at one point, but I don't remember exactly offhand. Some of this is just standard recipe stuff that I'm I'm putting in here. Um, we did comment out a couple things because we're going to get DRBD up and running, and then um, um, once we get the two nodes consistent, we can we'll come back and and modify this. All right, so that is my. R0 res. Now what I want to do here is uh, I think I want to do that on both nodes. So I'm going to um, SCP global common conf and R0 res to node 2 dot low end dot party to the same directory. All right so now over here on node Two at C D R B D D, and I should yep. There's my files. All right, so now um, let's see. I've created this on both nodes, and what I want to do here is do a D R B D atom. That is the uh, uh, administrative interface to D R B D. Create M D R zero. Ah. Of course, I've made a mistake. So let's go look at our global common comp. Uh, what did I mess up here? Ah, I do not need that um, colon there. And uh, rather than, yeah, actually, let's just go ahead and copy that over again. It's the easiest way to do that. All right, so now let's try that again. Boom, it is uh, created. And I am going to do a drbd atom up r0. Look at that. Now, if I do a cat proc dr, oops, dr, eh, drbd, I'll get it eventually. There we go. Okay, it's up and running. Now, let's go over to node two and do the same thing drbd atom create md r0 for this host. Interesting. Resource R0. Let's see here. Before we continue, I'd like to highlight one of our community advertisers. One of the key challenges facing hosting providers and many other businesses is ensuring email delivery. In this era of anti-spam filtering, it's all too common to see your legitimate email banished to a black hole by the major email providers. Fixing that problem is where MailBaby comes in. MailBaby provides simple email delivery and integrates with cPanel, Direct Admin, Exchange, and Plesk. MailBaby is an email smart host that offers outbound filtering. Emails are sent to MailBaby systems and are analyzed for content. Email is then routed through an email zone based on the email content and score of the email or bounce to spam. IP reputation is handled by MailBaby. MailBaby monitors all of their IPs for blacklists and works with email providers through feedback loops and other abuse monitoring to ensure email delivery. If you're not 100% certain that your email will be delivered, visit mail.baby to learn more about how MailBaby can help you today. Okay, so the issue here is that I have not set the host name on the system. So we'll just do a little bit of a live troubleshooting here. Um, host name, actually if I just type host name, I think it's F, host name from the file, Etsy host name. No, that's not it, oh, dash, I was right, dash F. Okay, so now if I type host name, I see it. Okay, so in other words, previously it was set to the default host name that Linode provides, and it just wasn't, uh, when it looked in the r0.res file, it was not finding um, any any matching host name. So I'm going to bet if we do this again now, let's do 
boom, there we go. Problem solved. Dr. BD atom up R0. And if I cat proc DRBD, good. Now, um, you'll see here it is secondary and consistent. And on this one, secondary and consistent, etc. Okay, so what we need to do is on, on one of these nodes, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to do it on node one, but uh, what we need to do is say DRBD atom primary force R0. And that's going to say, hey, I'm the primary now, and now if we go look at DRBD, it's synchronizing. Okay, this is the part here where it says it is uh, actually in sync, and if we go back over to node two, yeah, it's synced as well. Now, don't freak out by the fact that, you know, it's kind of interesting here, on node one it said, hey, it's gonna take me 58 minutes and 57 seconds. By the time we got over to node two, it was already down to 29 minutes. I wonder what it's, now we're down to 11 minutes. Okay, so don't put too much faith in that. Uh, it's gonna be pretty quick because, um, you know, it's in the same data center. There's not much, it's only got 10 gigs and uh, it's going back and forth. So, um, Let's let it get in sync here. We're down to six minutes. Once it's in sync, we're going to uncomment those things that we had commented. In fact, we can do that while we wait. So um, we're down to four minutes now. So let's go to um, our our zero res. So we're gonna turn off this on. You know, become primary. Or I'm sorry, we're gonna turn on become primary on both, and then allow two primaries. It should have a semicolon at the end. We're gonna turn that on. And then over here on node one, we're gonna make the, uh, nope, R0 res. The same changes. And semicolon at the end. Cool, so let's see where are we at now. Down to three minutes. All right, we're going to let this finish synchronizing, and then uh, as soon as it's um, as soon as it's done syncing, we're going to recycle DRBD to pick up those two changes, and um, we will then enable it in System D, and we'll be done setting up DRBD. Now, at this point, what we have is we have two partitions that are in sync but we don't have a file system on those partitions yet. That's what we'll be doing next time when we set up the Oracle cluster file system. So let's uh, see. All right, we'll be back in just a moment when these are in sync. All right, so uh, we are back and I have been watching this. And as you can see, the sync is now done. It no longer says syncing. So my, uh, I do a cat proc drbd, it shows it is in sync. I've got an up-to-date, up-to-date here. Uh, and if I go over here to node two, I also see up-to-date, up-to-date. We did uh, make some changes here to r0.resource. So what we need to do is um, system control stop drbd. And I think we'll just do that on both sides here. Now uh, we can then restart it here. System control start DRBD. And we'll do that over on the side as well. And then uh, we will, just to be sure, we're going to enable DRBD. And system control enable DRBD. Now we might as well just check while we're here, are we still in sync, yep, up to date, up to date. Good deal, so we've got DRBD up and running now. Next time, we're gonna set up the Oracle cluster file system, which will allow us to uh, do some testing of this, and you'll see it kind of in, in action. Until then, I would invite you to visit us at lowendbox or lowendtalk.com. We've got the best deals, bar none, in the hosting industry posted on a near daily basis there. We've got uh, excellent technical content, views and opinions from industry leaders, and very spirited discussion as always. Until next time, happy hosting.